Hi, I'm Mr. Chuck, from the naturalist from Black Hawk, and this is my granddaughter, Sarah, <laughs> who's going to accompany us today on one of our hikes. We're going to investigate one of Black Hawk's unique ecosystems. This is the river trail. Let's get started. As you can see, we're at station number three. So if you have a trail guide that you take with you, it'll tell you what is unique at that particular station. It's a special vine, and this is a vine uh, that you that has five leaves, so you can touch it. In the fall, it will have purple berries for the birds called Virginia creeper, and. We're going to come in contact, uh, well, at least visually, with another vine uh, that has three leaves that we're not going to touch, and that's poison ivy. When we find that, I'll point it out. And, if, and Sarah, if you spot anything as we're going along. Now here is that three-leaf ivy that we don't touch, and this is poison ivy. Poison ivy can grow as a shrub, it can grow as a ground cover, it can also grow as a, as a vine growing up the tree. Here you can see poison ivy as a vine growing up the tree. And this particular tree that is growing up is a, is a neat tree. This is called the burr oak, and it's one of our largest oaks. Acorns has this burry like coating uh, covering is complete almost the whole acorn is covered so if, if, uh, if you're out in the fall and you happen to find one of those you'll you'll remember it now on on the, the river trail we're actually going back in history 400 million years because this whole area at one time 400 million years ago was covered by oceans and so the between the the oceans water and the glaciers and and uh, the wind uh, eroded this stone and this is a special stone that if you come up and, and use your sense of touch you can feel it it has a sandy feel because this is called sandstone is actually stone that was created by the pressure of the sand in the water uh, making making this uh, rock this sandstone shows actually you can actually see the layering and so the top layer would be the would be the newest the youngest layer because it was laid down last now, a couple of other things you can see here. You can see this dark coloring here. That's from the coal that was present in the ground that seeped into the rock. And if you see any brownish color, that's from the iron that was in the water. So you see all these things just in this one piece of sandstone. I don't think this is identified in in the trail guide but at number eight look up and you'll see some holes in the bank those are holes made by a special bird called the belted kingfisher and that belted kingfisher looks like that and you'll notice that it has a, a minnow or a small fish in its mouth. 
That's why it's called the Kingfisher because it'll get down closer to the water and then sit up on a top tree branch and then dive down and get the, the fish. When the Kingfisher female gets ready to lay her eggs, she'll drill a hole in a bank like you see here and that hole might go back anywhere from seven to eight feet. She'll lay her eggs in there, in that hole, and then she will bring the fish to the, to the young. After about two weeks, she'll take them out, take them down to the water, and they'll learn to start hunting for fish on their own. The belted kingfisher. This is an animal that has been in the ground, underneath the ground, sucking the, the sap from this tree root, and it's called a cicada. When it's ready to turn into an adult, it climbs up out of the soil, climbs up on the tree, splits its skin, and now it has wings and it can fly. You never know from one day to the next what you're going to find. And Sarah just found, oh, this is fantastic. Sarah just found the, the second half of what we saw in that tree. Remember the, the cicada that split its skin? And when it splits its skin, this is what it looks like. On the river trail, this is one of the most unique spots to stop and just spend some time and go back in history just a couple hundred years back to the time when the Native Americans were here. And the Native Americans liked this area, the whole Black Hawk area, because it offered so much. And one of the things that it offered was this river. This was very important to them because this was their highway. They could transport their goods and, and uh, get from one village to another. Look down, and now we're going to jump back 400 million years, and you'll see another rock. Before, we were, were looking at sandstone. This is limestone. A lot of the, the shelly animals that lived in the ocean would die, and then their shell had a lot of lime in it. And so that'd be compressed to make a rock, just like the sand was compressed to make sandstone. The shells, the lime in the shells were compressed to make limestone rock. We've had classes that have come here on field trips and found uh, fossils of an of a animal that uh, called a brachiopod. It, it's kind of like a cousin of our, our, uh, our clams. This is a really good example of the outcropping of the, of the, uh, the coal that's uh, in the ground. Here you can, you can see our man-made brace to control the erosion because when we get heavy rains, especially with the slope of, of the hill, without some kind of stopping, some kind of brace, would be just eroding away. So we have that man-made erosion control, but we also have natural erosion control. If you look higher up, you can see the trees and their roots, and they're growing close together, and that is the natural erosion control to keep all the land from washing down. Our trees that you can see don't need a lot of sunlight and these are trees that also like the, the moisture uh, of being around the, uh, the water. This is a unique environment uh, for this kind of tree.
that is even better habitat for because remember the other one I said would should be a little bit higher. Yeah. It could it it is probably wide enough for the, the great horned owl. That would be ideal. The raccoon definitely would like that. They could climb up there. Uh, a squirrel could make make us winter home out of that. Okay, now that, that we've completed our, our hike on the trail, and we again just hit some highlights. When you're here, you can look for some of the things that we found, look for some new things. And another neat thing of it is we are here now in the first week of August. If you come here in the fall, come here in the winter, come in the spring, you're going to see some of the same things, but you'll see them in a, in a different season. You'll see them in a different light and see how things have changed. Thank you for watching and be sure and follow us on our Black Hawk State Historic Site website and Facebook. You can keep up to date with all the things that are happening and really, really we'd like to extend an invitation for you to come and visit us firsthand. Just explore nature and be a part of it and take advantage of this fantastic wonder of the Quad Cities.